But you see the way I appreciate the little you have done. How will you not want to do more? Therefore, I want you to bless the name of the Lord. I want you to show that gratitude. I want you to show appreciation of his loving kindness, of his faithfulness, of his good deed towards your life. He gives you peace. He has been helping you. He has been standing by you. Bible says many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him out of them all. If you know the plan of the devil for your life, see, if God opened our eyes sometimes to begin to see the agenda of the wicked one, you will pray more than this. The way you will pray, it will look like as if somebody is leading you in that prayer. You will pray to show gratitude. You will pray to show appreciation. He gives you health and strength. You walk into the new year. Just like you are going to step into another multiples of years. The devil could not hold you down last year. The devil could not kill you last year. And that's why you should know that the devil cannot overcome you. That's why you should know. That the devil cannot triumph over your life. So you want to talk about you want to talk of household enemies? You want to talk of wicked people in high places? You want to talk of, of, of a fundamental uh, 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 wicked ones? You want to talk about bloodline affliction? But I tell you. The Lord has been giving you breakthrough on every side. If that same God is not tired, you are a divine project, you cannot be abandoned. Until the contract of that project is fulfilled in your life, it continues. God never had a abandoned project. It will not leave you in the dark. In Jesus' name, we pray. If you have participated in this prayer, let me hear a louder amen. Amen. You are going to pray and tell the Lord, this is a new season. My brother and sister, January is gone. In 2024, January is gone. That January 2024 is a year you will not see again. It has gone into history. I keep telling you, the battle you refuse to overcome has prepared a lot of propensity to come back hard on your generation. And that is why you cannot afford a moment to just go without you having victory on every side. The problem of man is that we give up so soon. If we understand the protocol of the enemy, if you understand what the principle that governs the dark, if it comes to mind the kind of terrible miseries that goes on in wicked places, then you will know that each moment of your life should be meant for prayer. See what the Bible says? is a pray without season. No season of frivolity. No season of let me rest. For we do not have a continuity here. We need to continue fighting on. You are going to tell the Lord... As January has gone, you still have 11 months to go. You will tell the Lord, that breakthrough that is embedded in the new year, Holy Spirit, begin to release it upon me from this moment. Open your mouth and pray. Begin to release it upon me from this moment. I want to experience more of your breakthrough. 
Then you just made it to the normal. I like a kind of motive, a kind of attitude, like that of the Bartimeon. He care less of who hear his voice. He care more on his present condition. He care less of what people will say. He care more of the aftermath of that prayer. He care less of how much he creating awareness. But he cares more about his present. If you like, call me a blind man yesterday. If you cannot call me a blind man today when I have received my sight. When God begin to relocate you, when God begin to change all things around for you, when God begin to step into your marriage, begin to step into your family, begin to step into your protocol, begin to step into your heart desire, begin to step in into that thing that really matters to you. Then you will know that God has really answered that prayer. There are blessings for you in the new month, I'm telling you. We don't want to think about last year. We don't want to think about those times that has gone. Almighty God, you don't want to think about those years that have been wasted. You say how many of you? And at the reason of thinking, had one few feet to recycle. You want to take chronicle of how much you have lost in terms of finance all this year. You want to take into chronicle people that have promised you and that have failed you. I have a father that can never fail you. I have a God that can never fail you. And that God is in the house tonight. He will answer your prayer. One of those things that is affecting us mainly is because we're doing in the past. Is it the prayer of today that God wants to answer? What about the prayer of night vision? Is it the prayer of this online that God wants to answer? If you do not commonize that God you are praying to, you will know that God is a dynamic God. He uses anything for any purpose. He comes in right through at the nick of time. For your God is never late. Our God can never be late. And the prayer of tonight can turn a lot of things around for you. I have come to knowledge. To understand that sometimes our body, our problem, if we leave it there, it will remain there. If you leave that body there, it will remain there. Wow, oh Lord, arise. Arise, you Lord. A body can last for 38 years. A body can last the entire generation. But can you be like that woman who says, If I pay me for touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole? She don't stop to pay for that yet, yet before she gets a breakthrough. You don't have to waste an entire generation before you get what you want. Oh Lord, he said, they that oh Lord, know their God, God shall be strong and do exploit. If you know him, you will, you, will, you will be strong. If you know him, you will do valiantly. In the name of Jesus, greater is he that is him. It's a year of possibility. Oh, this year is a year. And like I have told you on this platform, it's a year for fighters. A year for people that can fight and prevail. A lot of things is blocked in this year. But I feel it for you to gain access into your treasury explosion. Must come to an end. 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 Oh, then there are a lot of opportunities for you. There are a lot of achievements for you. And holy nation. If you could have been the place of him, I call you out of darkness into his mouth. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Oh, God, Arise, you go first. Arise, you go. Arise, you go. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
If yes. you have said amen, then say a louder amen. Amen. God bless amen. that voice I am hearing. God bless you, Timo, in the name amen. of Jesus. Ah, amen. I want you to turn your Bible with me to the book of Genesis. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 11. If you are in Genesis chapter 11, say hey, amen. I will give you time to turn your Bible with me to the book of Genesis chapter 11. And the whole earth was of one language. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want you to please regulate your voice. If you know you will not have on that present concentration, then concentration, then you can uh, please be on mute. For we do not want distraction. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the book of Genesis chapter 11, verse uh, Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of China. And they dwell there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and sling that day for mortar. And they said, see, let us build us a city and a tower. Whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make use a name. Let us make us a name. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the old earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of uh, men built, built it. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Now let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the head, and they left off to build the city. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to share with you. How and from where the witch, the witches, are blocking their structure of operation, and that structure of operation, I tell you, is what they are using up to now. But whatever, uh, whatever manner of operation of the enemy tonight. Their operation will be scattered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I said the Lord will scatter the operation of your enemy tonight. Amen. Amen. In verse 4, and they said, See, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the head. In a witch strategy, when a witch wants to strategize, the first thing they do is that they will do uh, 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 what we call investigation. They go around. Let me, let, let's take, for example, in a family. They will go through that family. How can we enter this family? 
The, because the purpose of the enemy is to steal and to kill and to destroy. And so when they see treasures build up around a family, what they want to do is to see how to gain access into that family. <coughs> and, and so the number one thing they, thought of, they, they, they think about is to build a structure. Now, where can we build this structure? They will evaluate, they conjure the spirit of the first one till the last one. So when they now get a prototype, listen to me very well, if they did not get a prototype, a time will come that they will want to get married. Married. A time will come that they will be looking for job. A time will come that they will want to have a, a friend, at least a friend we can talk to. You know, a friend in the, a friend in need is a friend indeed. You, you need somebody to talk to. You need somebody to relate with. You, you need somebody to open up to. And so they will use through that platform to build their structure. Look at it. They have been passing through. This is not the first time. They say, and the whole earth was of one language. There is harmony. They understand themselves. And they work for one purpose to achieve greatness. And now, in this one language, it came to pass that as they journey, you understand, they begin to evaluate. They evaluate the first one. Remember, when Samson, when Samuel get to Jesse's house, he saw the first one. Ah, it should be this one. By the time spirit begin to talk to spirit, he said, no, this is not the one. Don't look at statue. He checked the second one. Ah, the name is very good. It must be this one. No, it is not selection by name. And so spirit need to conjure with spirit. So as they journey from the east, and that they found a plane in the land of China. Aha! This is the place we are going now. They have checked the first one. Is your head susceptible to evil? They have checked the second one. Can you partner with us to work this great, great disaster? And they check the third one. Which one is vulnerable? And they dwell there. And they said unto one, they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. Maybe you don't understand that part. Once they have found a place, the next thing they want to do is to build an altar there. You say, what do you mean? When Jezebel enter, when she find her way through into the land of Israel, she saw the altar that was there. The God of Israel is so powerful that when you carry the ark of the Lord to any war, you dis they destroy their enemy and, and spoil them and everything. And the great witch says, what can I do? How can I penetrate? How can I have my way? How can I operate without restriction? And the next thing was that she set up an altar. She built an altar. She overrode the existing altar, and they had and brick they had for stone, and sling had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach up to heaven. And let us make us a name. Now, let me explain this one to you. When you build an altar, that altar is a place of authorization. When once you enter that altar, then you begin to, it's a spirit conversation. There is no altar you see. Either altar for God or altar for the devil. Altar is a place where you conjure with spirit. If you climb on your altar and you call to the God of Zion, you are calling a spirit. You call to the I am that I am. You call the ancient of the, he will appear to you. He will manifest himself to you. And so, if it is the otherwise too, if you want to call for blood, if you want to call for anything, whatever, is a place of authorization. And they say, let us build up a place whose tower top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad. Do you understand that? If we make this altar, we can call it a place of blood. We can call it the grave altar. We can call it the angry voice, whatever name you want to call the altar. 
And now let us now choose us a name such that wherever you are, anytime I climb on that altar and I call you, spirit of the dead, you appear. Or I call you the blood demon sucker, then you appear. Or I call you the spirit failure, then you appear. Wherever you are, let us make us a name such that if wherever you are scattered, so once I climb on that altar and I call your name, you understand my language and then you appear there. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man build. He said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. He did not say the, 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 the tower of man. The tower of man is nothing. It's just a conjoinment between the three. Because they want to build it from, from down to the top so that they can have access to anywhere. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one. The people is one. That is, they have collaborated together. They have ganged up together for one purpose, for a purpose of destruction. They have gathered to know more than what they are supposed to know. And they have all one language, all one purpose, all one decree, the same agenda. They say they want to kill you. They say they want to ruin your destiny. They have one language. If you run from here to another place, you run from one city to one city, from one country to one country, you meet them there, all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them. Amen? Amen. Nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined. He said, why do the eating rage? And the people imagine they eat him. Why is it that they are after your life? Why is it that they never made anything good for you but for destruction and disgrace? He said, which they have imagined to do. Now, what should we do? See, in verse 7, let us go down. When we get there, we confound their language that they may not understand one another. When the Lord confirms the agreement of your enemy, they will scatter and they will not understand themselves. A louder, amen. 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 When they call themselves spirit to spirit, and they, 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 they meet at that center point, on that altar, where they want to execute their agenda from state to state, city to city, country to country, when the Lord appeared there, they will be scattered. Amen. 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 In verse 8, so the Lord scattered them abroad from the earth upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. He scattered them abroad from yes from that place where they are upon the face of all the heads scatter them that they could not even see that their agenda is destroyed everything is destroyed oh yeah now come and make one you know what god wants to do for you on everything they have they, they have set up on every agenda they have set up and how they have got the graph of your life how they have said it is this year they want to terminate your life how they say it is this year they want to take away your ministry how they have said it is this year they want to make you a vagabond how they have said it is this year they want to squander everything you have labor on how they said it is this year you will end up in hospital bed how they say it is this year they will steal everything you have the lord will confound them in the amen. name of Jesus. Amen. If you have a louder amen to say, please say amen that will check the heaven. Amen. amen. I amen. want you to close your eyes and go before the Lord and say, Lord, stop oh. the agenda of the enemy for my Father, life. Open your mouth and pray. The object agenda. I come on the cash fire. I come on the cash fire. 
Let them gather from whatever country they are wasting their time. This one we are talking about, they are called soccer. They are time wasters. They terminate people's life before their time. People cry. People cry. They subject people to pains and torment. They weaken your spiritual life. You get to a place of prayer, you cannot even pray. You are called discouraged, you cannot pray. You pray for a few minutes, you are beginning to sleep because your altar is already corrupted. And they are found a place. They are found a place. He says a man enemy is from his own household. They have checked it and they see that this place is very good for an altar. And that altar has been there from generation to generation. Once another generation is set up, they come around and do for the best best place. She has left the idol. And that idol begins to put on for them the way they want to. Only to terrorize and scatter them. Scatter their language. Scatter their agenda. In the name of Jesus. You come to this world, a lot of activities are going on. You do not even understand one case of what is going on. All you just know is that you are a victim of that circumstance. This is not the way I planned my life to be. This is not the way I expected it to be. Why did he even raise? And the people imagine very things. I am crying. I am crying. No man help me. I am crying. No man come to my aid. Instead of me to get better, it's getting more hard. It's getting more difficult. I am telling you, it is the altar that I can manifest it. It is the altar that is most clean. If tonight we pray, God will scatter that altar. God will scatter them from the face of the head. The name of the Lord is a strong power. It is a power that is greater than any power. That is the power of God. What you need to do tonight is call on that name. Call on his name and answer you. Call on his name, he will answer you. They think evil, but they do what they are evil. If they think about every day of their life is how to end your life. Yeah. 
you think that when you leave that place and you go to another place, the trouble will be over. Apart from there, we have scattered themselves everywhere. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me quickly lecture you on this one. You know, sometimes we do, you, you don't understand the way these people operate. We were praying one day, and, uh, and one of those people we were praying for, the, the enemy, the devil, the demons, begin to manifest through him. And so it got to a point, we were now addressing that spirit, and we say, what is your name? Ah, uh, he said, if I mention my name, you cannot know me. Okay. Who gave you this assignment? Ah, uh, he said, I do not know. You don't know who gave you assignment. You are a stubborn spirit. We will kill you today. Uh, he said, you don't need to kill me. It is because you don't understand the way we operate. If you understand the way we operate, you will know that you don't need to know anybody before you send them work. So how do you do it? He said, we summon spirit. All we need to do is summon spirit wherever that person is. If we summon spirit, that spirit will be readily available to appear to us. And then we will not tell him, go and do this. We say, we help ourselves. This one help themselves in London. This one has spread themselves in, in, in Ghana, in, in Nigeria. That is how we summon spirit. And so you will think that when you run away from this place, let me go and hide in the place. Uh, let me see where I am. Let me go to Shechem. So that when I go to Shechem, then no problem again. God knowing that the bigger problem is waiting there for you. These are the way this spirit operates. And that is why they are scattered everywhere. They don't need to know themselves. They don't need to know themselves. You are going to pray and tell them, wherever my enemies are hiding, Wherever they have scattered and brought to hide their place and camouflaging like a mass student. Holy Spirit, expose them and scatter them. Open your mouth and pray. Expose them and scatter them. You are praying like as if you don't understand what I am saying. But we, we cannot give you understanding. This is a form of what God do every day. And when you understand there are problems, there are challenges, and you understand that it is through prayer you can set up your own altar, you will not be praying the way you are praying. You will be sweating because you have perfect understanding. Because you have more knowledge of what is going on. I want you to pray tonight, brother. My sister, I want you to pray. In the the prayers. Confuse them and confuse their language. Let the language be hard. When they did not understand themselves. In Jesus' name we pray. I hope you know that it is not only in this chapter or this verse that God confirms the language of the enemy. Let me quickly explain another one to you. When they wrote letter to the whole shepherd, we are coming because we don't even know how this your God is so sentimental and is so favored you that uh, you can go anywhere and destroy anywhere. We are coming to you, we are coming to destroy you. About three nations rose up and said, We will destroy you. Then you look at it, they became like they, they were like grasshopper. And the old shepherd prayed, and people of God come together and pray. There is this dimension I want us to exhibit in our ministry. It is very necessary with we, we exhibit it because if that thing is not in your ministry, you may not be able to get direction. How do I mean? 
they were in a place that they were praying, and the spirit of God came upon one of them, and he voiced out, he began to speak out, and he said, do you have a musician? Then send your musician ahead of the battle. Without that, we wouldn't have known the agenda of God. All we will know is that we are praying. And the problem the spirit has with the physical is that it keeps communicating, but the language medium is always the barrier. And you will not know that God has told you something. God, why have you not answered me? He has answered you. The ability to interpret that language is for the one to understand is where the problem comes from. And so, when they sent the musician ahead of them, and then they came now, they wanted to come and fight. What happened here? The Lord performed their language. And they look at this one, eh? Why did you kill my brother? I will kill your own brother too. Why did you kill my mother? I will kill your own mother too. Why did you kill my husband? I will kill your husband too. They begin to kill themselves. By the time they get to a point of that battle where they say they should have some for the battle content, they got there and discovered that all of them are dead. Oh, that is how to conform the language of the enemy. You are going to pray one more time from the heart and say, God, conform the language of my enemy. Please open your mouth and pray. Let them be confirmed. Then they want to be done. We to drink your blood. Two by two. Jesus. 
And I pray for you, for those that have been dreaming about death and death. No, it is not you that will die. It is your enemy that will die. Amen. Amen. Now Amen. we ask from uh, prayer requests online, and uh, we will want us to pray about uh, 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 because of those prayers that uh, uh, sent directly to uh, my my message, uh, my box, and some are sent to the prayer request platform. But I want us to just take a moment. I, I want you to understand that you know sometimes. Because of the prayer, because of the challenge that we are going through. And each time you go before the Lord in prayer, you talk up, you talk more about yourself. You talk more. Holy Ghost, kill them. Holy Ghost, root them out. Holy Ghost, destroy them. Holy Ghost, do this one. But I have found a formula. I now discover that God's formula is different from our own formula. In God's formula, the way up is down. Look at what he says. He said, he that saved his life shall do what? I, I, oh, you don't know it. He that saved his life shall lose it. Yes, <laughs> when you lose your life, you will gain it. Uh -huh. So the way up is down. Now, if you want God, if you look at your challenge and you really want God to do something for you, the best way to do it is to begin to pray for others. Amen? Amen. Amen. There are a lot of prayer requests we have online. And I want you to just pray in, in, in just short moments. I want you to pray now that the Holy Spirit will answer those prayers. There are, there are many we have, I tell you, but that God will grant their heart desire. And their desire in their heart, Holy Spirit, bring it to pass in their heart. Please don't put your mouth and begin to pray for them. They want to pray for admission. They want to pray for provision. They want to pray for finance. They want to pray for uh, connection. They want to pray for contract. They want to pray for healing. I won't pray for this time. Please open your mouth and pray that the Lord will grant your heart is our. As many people are coming to you, O oh Lord, tell them that all of them, O Lord, let me get to them. What is getting to them is encompassing you. They need, they need career. That shall be true, O Lord, my God. You go for this afternoon, all of their prayer in Jesus' name. You then testify in the name of Jesus. You are God and ask us to pray by fire. They are prayer requests in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I want you to say a louder amen. Amen. Almighty God, we bless you and we worship you because you are glorified always. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you have us in mind. Mm. Thank you for the good things. Thank you for everything you have been doing for us. There is nothing that happened to man that you do not know about. Therefore, Lord, out of those that concern us, we have come before you. And we have prayed prayers today. Lord, answer our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. There are a lot of agendas of the enemy, gatherings of enemy. Lord, we pray you will confound them. You Amen. will scatter them. You will Amen. dislodge them. You Amen. will break their bonds. In Amen. the name of Jesus. Lord, Amen. I pray no enemy will triumph over our life. No Amen. enemy will celebrate victory over us. In Amen. the name of Jesus. Lord, answer our prayer today. Thank Amen. you, Holy Spirit. Thank In you, Lord. Jesus. Name we are praying. Amen. I want you to say louder. Amen. 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 Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's pray for Pastor Dako. That by the grace of the Lord, any weapon against him shall not prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, he's leading the battle. He's there in the front. Yes, he's delivering. I pray you answer all his blessings. He is doing the Lord in order to expand the kingdom of God. All those three secure him. God, he might have been passing through himself, his family. In his family, in his children, and in everything in general. Many yeah. people believe yeah. when the leader yeah. is being affected, yeah. he's out of his family, 
Father, the congregation is in mess. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. The Almighty God will continue to protect us. Ah. Power of enemies. We must fasten upon his power in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray for his family. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, from God to God, in the name of Ayah to Ayah, God will continue to manifest his power upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. And the name of the Lord will continue to pray. The Bible let me know who so attack them is attacking God. Call upon the name of the Lord. The power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Enemy may flow in one way to attack him. In several ways, they will go back in the name of Jesus Christ. God will continue to strengthen him. The God of the Lord will continue to be his strength. God will continue to elevate him. He will not lack. He will not lack. The only God will continue to back him up. More anointing from above. And he is complete. Be looking with him in the name of Jesus Christ. And he is binding. He will be binding with him in the name of Jesus Christ. They pray that more way in the ministry. God is working for him in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, in a more way, especially, God is working for him in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. That by his power in the blood of Jesus Christ, he will enjoy his head. He has shaken away many diseases out of the life of people. By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, he will continue to enjoy his head. Grace for the Lord will continue to be sufficient for him. The eye will continue to burn. His tongue will continue to burn. As we continue to burn, about the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, there may be little to take up, but you will not know the way of hospital for a because of the sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace of the Lord will be with him. The joy of the Lord will be with him. Let's pray for all our donors, all the people who are making this Pray that possible. Yes. This is for us, O Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord that in many ways God is going to be reporting them back in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray for their generation. That by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, for those people who are donating money, for those people who are bringing money, the pastor do this one to back God. I think God that we are able to sustain the prayer meeting. That by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, their generation will not lack in the name of Jesus Christ. They have fallen a little day. God will bless them. God will bless their children. God will bless the children of their children. And I say, God will contribute to the God to the word of the Lord. Quietly, secretly, only God will reward your God will reward your generation in the name of Jesus Christ. The wealth in their family will escalate to the extent that no world will be able to cover it in the name of Jesus Christ. Every, every world will bow down for them, and as they, are, they are doing this. They will not miss the kingdom of God. Yeah, the family will not miss the kingdom of God. All oh, what belongs to them will not miss the kingdom of God. Because, because where they are called to, they will reap there. And what they are they going to reap? The joy of salvation to the order. Let's call upon the name of the Lord that Almighty God is going to bless them. They will not lack. 
They will not bear before they eat. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, where there's no way, no, I don't want to open way for them in the name of Jesus Christ. What they think has been so difficult, just because they are happy this man prayer to be so sorry. God will sustain their life in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever be the tear of their, their eyes, God will wipe away in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray for them. Let pray for them. The sources of their oil will not die in the name of Jesus Christ. They will continue to be given, and God will continue to replace in them. Almighty God will bless them. Annoyed. One of our brothers has been standing for another brother that they have no child. <laughs> Let's call upon the name of the Lord. I promise him. Many things God has done in this prayer meeting. And that God is not that. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Just because this brother is very humble. You will not see us, he does not see us as somebody that is very simple. Because you can see our group just an ordinary group. Father, the power in the blood. God will open the womb. God will open the womb. God will open the womb. Open the womb. Sister will be pregnant in the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus. For so ever be the hindrances. Open their womb. But whatever be the hindrances, God will remove in the name of Jesus Christ. It is the promise of the Lord. The reason why I bring up marriage is peace. Last in that place, so that you will continue to produce from generation to generation. And in chief, then what one what one to delay the promise of the law on this family? Where you are going to upon the name of the law. That by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. God will remove in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. By the power and the blood of Jesus, miraculous day. Open their womb. God lost the child testimony. Pray for your child. I want you to call upon the name of the Lord for your child. For Father. Call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power of God will enlighten the coast of your child. Man, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Call upon the name of the Lord. For marvelous. Yes, you want to be a lawyer. Yes, it is in secondary. Or it is in the university. Or it has no work. Or it is still working on the order. Call upon the name of the Lord. That is the power by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray for Jeremiah. God will. Oh my God. The cause of your soul. The cause of your soul. Where there's no way, your children, my children, we have in the name of Jesus Christ. They will have that way. Open door for them. Open door for them. Like their coach, higher level. The life of our children. But the power and the blood of God is going to return in the name of Jesus Christ. All my people, God is going to return in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. That the Lord will suppress us, will suppress us, will suppress my children. That by the name of the Lord, they will be the end. And the end, wherever they are, will be permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. Speak to Lord. Forget it that your children is going to be a second hand citizen. Oh, my children. Forget it that my children is going to be a second hand citizen. My children. That by the glory of the Lord. All my people is going to be obliged. The glory of the Lord will be their prayer. God will take them to the higher places. The power and the blood, they will not serve other children. But children, all that children is going to serve them in the name of Jesus Christ. Children, we serve my children in the name of Jesus Christ. Children, we serve my children in the name of Jesus Christ. They will be the head of parasite now. Children will be the head of parasite now. Children will be the head of a nation. My children will do the head of many industries. Now they will be the head of a nation. Children will be the head of a nation. 
for the issues. I pray for the end of ministry. I pray for John. I pray for the power of the Lord. God will empower them. Go beyond. Let them down. 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 Before pastor, before pastor, 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 Bring it to pass in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord, while we are praying for our children and we are praying for ministry, Lord, we pray that we will not lose our reward in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray, Father, that the fire of God will continue to burn in us and radiate in us that no power of darkness will be able to come near us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our altar will not be broken down. Amen. Our place of prayer will not become a dung hill. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, Amen. recharge Amen. our spiritual power, our spiritual prayer, so that our fire will continue to rekindle in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank you, favorable Father, because we know you have answered our prayer. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace together. May thy grace, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Surely, God's goodness. Thank you. God bless you. Please do not forget the garden of the evil tomorrow. The joy that Lord will continue to be our strength in Jesus' name. And please let us work on our our attendance. Please let us work on it. Uh, it's not so encouraging. Not that it's not good, but it's not so encouraging. Let us do more. To be reminding people too. thank you please some of our pastor that you have the time please meet me on uh zoom i mean uh what's up so that we quickly discuss something god bless you thank you bye bye sir
that it will, it will benefit, benefit you. you. It will enrich your life. It will enrich your ministry. And it will enrich your, and it will enrich your understanding, understanding as we as look, look at the word of God together. Well, what we're, we're looking at today is very familiar to you. The Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the head of the church, is sending him to the church. Although he said unto the church, the church, 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 if you look, look at that one, 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 it's talking about the power of the minister. It says that, that and that, and know thy works, I know thy labor. It's referring to the labor, it's referring to the service of the minister. And then, although it's the one sending the message, it says all the churches should pay attention. All the churches should read this. All the churches should learn from this. All the churches should get what is seen in the past years. Look at it in verse 1. Unto the ancient of the church of Ephesus Christ. This thing says he that folded the seven stars in his right hand. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Introducing himself. It says in verse 2. It was 2. It says, I know thy works. I know thy labor. I know thy patience. I know how thou canst not. Not, not be of them which are evil, the die and the die shows that he's talking to the individual, talking to the minister, he's talking to the human leader, the shepherd in that church, and he says, I know that you have tried, thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and has found them liars. You see, this pastor here, the shepherd here, was doing the right thing that he wanted to do, and he tells us in verse 3. It says in verse 3, and you are born, I was born. And as patience, and as for my name, say, thou hast labored and hast not painted. Now in verse 4, it says, nevertheless, I have things to say about you, nevertheless, you are still in the ministry, nevertheless, and you are very active, and you are laboring, nevertheless, you are rendering service to me, and you are rendering service to the church, and you are doing the work that ought to be done. Nevertheless, you are involved in the great commission, who you told me. World and put the gospel to every creature, and then the membership of the people that come teaching them all things whatsoever I have said unto you, nevertheless, although you are doing good and you are doing all those good things, nevertheless, I have suffered against thee because thou hast led thy person on. He says, I was fine. He says, Remember, therefore, from where thou art fallen and repent and do the was or, or, or else I will come on to thee quickly. I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thy repent. You see what the Lord is telling us? The minister of this church at labor, at perseverance, at what fullness. The minister of this church at endurance, he had sacrificial service. The minister of this church was well committed. He had good commitment, great Commitment, continual commitment, he had consecration, and he had courage as well. But nevertheless, he lacked the first love. And the Lord Jesus Christ was saying it will be necessary to recover that first love, or the wise, the candles will be removed. I'm sure you have heard of the people that talk about what they call unconditional love. And we have the idea that Christ loves. Unconditionally, that is, there's no condition at all. It just loves us, and then they tell us we should love people unconditionally. That is, whether they are right or wrong, just leave them to what they did. Love them unconditionally. Whether they are upright or they are backsliding, don't worry about that. Love them unconditionally because, according to them, God loves us unconditionally. Jesus said, I have something against you. 
it was down. But you see, if you are not seeing, you know, I was discouraged and all that. And I felt what the use of all this when the force of law is there. There are fresh fellowship every time. It says in 1 John chapter 1, beginning from verse 7. 1 John chapter 1, when you begin at verse 7, it says, but if we're walking in life, as he is in the life, we can fellowship one way to another. And the blood of Jesus Christ is something cleanses us from all sin. Number one, first love is expressed through the first faith. Number two, first love establishes fresh fellowship. Number three, first love abandons former forces. First love abandons former forces. As you look at first Peter chapter one, meaning it was fourteen. First Peter chapter one, meaning it was fourteen. It tells us about the love we ought to have and about the expression of that love and about the action of that love. The former things are abandoned as we be children, not questioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance. I have no in true marriage of my own they come, they come together. together. Before, Before they knew the, the will of God to be told, maybe the woman asked some friends. But now, now all those former friends have abandoned. Maybe the man asked some friends. But now all the former friends have abandoned. If there is still a tattling and a remembrance of the former friends and former Lord, there's no true love. If the heart of the woman is still going to kill our I remember, 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 so was boyfriend, when so was, so was so a sin partner, there's no true love there, but you see, when you have the first love, the first love, I'm a former friend, I'm a former person, look at verse 22, what's the potential chapter 1, verse 22, it says that when you have the first love there, see me a purified soul, in hearing the truth, to the spirit, but for the law of pretending love, of the love of the brethren, see that she may love one another with a pure heart, fervently, and the heart is not distracted and scattered here and there. There is real love. And look at number four, not us love and praise. If you really have the love of Christ in your heart, like at the first time, like at the year ten, when you first became a pastor, when you first became a preacher, when you first became a minister, you want to teach the people of God your love is the best time in your life. And you are excited about it. You were real, you were real. You will search your Bible, you will pray, pray, pray about it, you, you will be giving prayer, 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 what should I give to your people? people? But when but that first that love, love is gone, 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 it all says scratch the surface of the Bible, and then, then you, you go to give them something, 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 something cold, something they can preach, that is not even what you want. And the people don't really appreciate, they don't enjoy what you're giving, but the the first love we have will embrace feeding the flock. It tells us in John chapter 21, verse 15. First of John chapter 21, it says in verse 15, look at this way they are dying. Jesus says to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, love is thou me, love is thou me, love is thou me more than this. He says to him, yes, Lord, ye, Lord, Lord knows that I am you. He says something to be beach, my lad. If we are the Lord, the Lord and our first love is there, feeling the love of God will be the, the, the priority of our life. It will be the greatest employment that we have. It will be the joy of our heart to fulfill. It's not just to put something on the table, but I say, no, we should not. It's not just to serve something, but I need the spiritual needs of the people on the beach. It tells us in Acts chapter 20. 
Bible verse 28 asks chapter 20 being there from verse 28 it tells us take heed therefore unto thyself take heed therefore unto thyself you know if you are going to preach and the people of God let's come back to our families at this time you know what what we are being told and it's the right thing that we should follow the rules of IG we take heed unto ourselves you make sure that you wash your hands very well before you serve the, uh, the, uh, the food to, to the, the family, family. and, and, and also, also you keep clean, clean yourself. yourself. Your clothing should be clean, clean. your body, your body, body, body should be clean, clean. Not, your ear style and your ear should, should be clean. clean. Not, not, if you're going to serve, there is no use you know going to the kitchen and cooking all that and talking and talking all the saliva is you know mix with the food. You are not taking it to yourself. The same thing as you're serving the people of God, take heed therefore unto yourself. And to all the flock, look at all the flock. When there's a first love, this is what we do. You look at the young people, you look at the children, you serve them balanced diet. You serve them food that will nourish their body, that will cook in their brain, that will make them their flesh. You know what it is to eat, that will give them good complexion, that will give them a good look, and that will preserve them and give them immunity, that will help them. As they are going up, the same thing in the church of the living God. You have your first love for Christ. Then you are going to feed the flock of God. You take heed, therefore, to yourself and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. First love also will hate filthy flesh. First love also will hate filthy flesh. Just like we are, you know, said, and I believe it without saying it, if that woman loves the husband, she will hate filthy flesh. Any communication, whether on phone, whether through a text, whether on WhatsApp, whether through or whatever, whatever that is filled with, with another, another man, man, man that will seem to give an idea. idea. See, if yeah. the woman yeah. is yeah. not really yeah. fully yeah. for the yeah. husband, yeah. her mind, her heart, her emotion, her desires, her pleasure is not fully for the husband. She is getting a kind of a pleasure in another way. In various places for all the men. That's not the first law. That's law. That's filling it. The false love to the Savior, to the Master, where the page still be flesh. In Ephesians chapter 5, in Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 5, in Ephesians 1, it says, Be therefore followers of God as dear children. Look at verse 2. It says, And walk in love, and talk in love, and act in love, and demonstrate the love, and do everything. The language of your mouth, your mouth, the look of your eyes, and the sensation, and your understanding, and everything in you, your walk in love, your behavior, your character, your walk in love, as Christ has taught us, and giving himself for us, and offering, and a sacrifice to God for his own many saves. Look at verse 3. It says in verse 3 about the fornication, and all and all and all and all for covetousness, let it not be once named among you as the other says. You know, some people that keep on saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, you don't have to talk about it all the time. Let's, 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 let's just see that you're free from, from fornication. You're free from all uncleanness, all forms of uncleanness in your thoughts, in your plan. In your attitude, in your outfit, in your dresses, in your exposure, in your lifestyle. You don't have to accept it, you to understand. Leave all that in your and let us see it from the life of fornication, all of cleanness, and of covetousness. Let it not be once named among you as the comic says. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, no 
about just which are not coming is is talking about only just as not coming to see but but they are not coming is talking about the forgiveness not proper proper foolish talking not proper just just not proper but rather the giving of thanks and then he says in verse five in verse five for this you know that no 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 if ye continue in the faith, if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached unto every creature, which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, a mage, a minister. And now, number seven, it says, love exalts the faithful first begotten. And is the faithful first begotten, and love will exalt him. Love will elevate him. Love will put all the interest on him. In fact, you know what it says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. It says, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. That is, he who does not exalt and elevate and have the highest interest for the faithful first begotten for the Lord Jesus Christ is not worthy of him. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He wants us to love him with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our mind. That is what he wants us to recollect. We're coming back now to Revelation chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 4. Point number 2 now, Revelation chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 4. In point, this point number 2 says, The rebuke for fervent labor without the beatitude. Rebuke for fervent labor without the beatitude. We're coming to Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. It says, Nevertheless, I have some watch against thee. Nevertheless, I have some watch against thee, because thou hast led thy false love. And now, if you look at the subtitle there, fervent labor, I know your works, I know your labor, I know your service, I know your perseverance, I know your patience, but you have led your first love. The beatitude was not there. What's the beatitude? Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 3. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, here we have the beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Can you think of laboring for the Lord without contrition in the spirit and without loneliness in the heart? And without uh, any confession when uh, sin uh, has taken place. And just going on, just going on. Keep on writing and keep on editing and keep on preaching and keep on ministering and keep on interceding and keep on singing and keep on uh, exalting and keep on teaching of the scripture. And yet there is no poverty of spirit and there's no contrition of spirit. There's no sorrow for sin when sin has taken place. That is fervent labor without the beatitude. Look at verse 4. It says in verse 4, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. 
when backsliding has taken place, you ought to mourn. When you are convicted by the words of God, when you are convicted by what we study together, when the Lord is saying, you are not there, you are not there, your heart is not there, and you are not at the height you ought to be. And when you are convicted like that, you mourn, you cry before the Lord. It's like something is lost. Your husband, the bridegroom, the Lord is saying, the first love is not there. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. But you know, the person that goes on just sacrificing and just laboring, whether the love accepts it or not, well, I just keep on serving. This is duty. Duty without heart devotion unto the Lord. Look at verse 5, the beatitude now. In verse 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek, they are the lowly. The meek, they are the humble. You see, when there's no humility anymore in our service, when there is uh, pride in our service, when there is uh, brashness in our service, and when there is oppression in our service, and we just uh, move on like a conqueror, as if we come, instead of feeding the church, we're conquering the church. When the beatitude is missing and there's no meekness, there's no, there's no lowliness, we cannot keep on in service.